Hi, welcome to my playhouse and today I want to talk to you about the management module in a server and why it's a really good idea to get one of those and most of these servers that you buy today they have a management module and um, some of them you get some amount of features and some you get less amount and you can buy more features it's codes or sometimes you put something down into the motherboard and you get you open up for some more features let's just see a couple of management modules here now I said that the management module is built into the server uh, on these servers it's actually not built in on my servers over here it's part of the motherboard but the management module was really the first one I saw was this HP one and this was an extra card that you could buy and you plugged it in your server and it connected to the server here and it connected to a, a switch on the motherboard with this dude and I, I can't remember if this went anywhere but then you moved your screen and your keyboard and mouse and it needed some power and it needed a network connection as well and you moved that over uh, into the management module and you could control the server through the management module and you could power it and more or less this is just a computer on a PCI board this is the first one I've ever seen they became smaller in in this server that we're gonna be seeing in just a moment it's just a little tiny board that is mounted in there over here it's uh, integrated on the motherboard a little section of the server that is always powered on but what do you do with a management module that's um, that's a good question because everybody can turn on and off their server remotely through wake on LAN for example but let's start on the on the back of the server here we are on the back of my servers I have two network connections going in each server there is a LAN connection and there is a management connection and I've marked all my management connections with red it's really a stupid color because on this system it means that the red ones I can I can take out put in as I wish it, it won't ruin production or anything like that but the management module is uh, put into the switch down here and I've kind of made the system that the management modules are on the bottom ones and I, I do two cables patch two cables together so each server has management model and a network connection and well that's how it works here for me and here I look on my servers up here they each have two connections and power here is the server it's my favorite module the IBM slash Lenovo X3650 model 1 and here we have the management output and if there is not a management this server you can you can get without a management port and you pay it was fairly cheap back when this server was new I think it was under a hundred dollars for a management port for the server or the, uh, the management card for this server and the management card is hidden down here it's actually over here but the network connection is over here so by putting in this little tiny card let's just take it out here it is that's the management module for this server and it's a tiny little PC that controls the, the management and it has a little USB stick I've never used that for anything it has also a little reset button I have used that because from time to time these decide they don't want to work anymore and they have to be booted it's a server in the server and these are actually run on power CPUs it's the fastest management module I've ever come across the later models of the servers they were slow as hell compared to this one so let's put this back in there we are so what can you do with a management port well it, it takes up a network connection that is pretty irritating and this management model you don't have to move your screen and keyboard over in it if it's in there it will automatically use the screen and the keyboard um, so let's go into the computer and see what you can do with a management module. Okay, here is my VMware installation and 
the top one of the IBMs in my rack number two out in the data center is this one. And that is turned on. The number two down here is not turned on. It's actually off out there. That doesn't mean that I can't turn it on. I could do a wake on land to it. I can also do the management module. And I have another server down here. This is a, let's just see this one again. This is a model one, the 7979. And if we go down here, we have a model two as well online right there. The management adapter on the first model was called an RSA2 adapter. Then to the model 2 they changed the name to IMM. And down here I have a model 3 as well. And that uses the same. And the, the 2 and 3 uh, the IMMs, they're pretty slow. I'm kind of disappointed why they did that, because this one was really good. But let's go see it and what we can do. I have a jump server here and I have already punched in the IP number for the remote supervisor adapter and number two, refresh one. I have no idea what that is. To log in, you have to create a user on this. It it is compatible, so you can use your Active Directory. I don't do that. I have just the standard user, which is user ID with capital letters. And the password is password with a zero instead of an O. That's the standard. Here you get prompted how long a session you want. And uh, it's always a good idea to set the session length because sometimes you want it to kick you off. If it, if it fails and you are not standing right beside the server, it's a good idea to have a session timeout so that it will kick you and then you only have to wait 20 minutes. Otherwise, I could say it, set it to no timeout. And if I'm on this, the server and it, it for some reason dies, I would have to go drive to it and reset the RSA manually. And that's not fun. Okay, here we have the RSA adapter of this server and you have a lot of good options here. First it tells you it's an IBM and it's, yeah, we just read that. It tells you the server name. This is highly important that you go in and you type in the server name or the IP or something that refers to this because uh, like out in my data center I have nine of these servers and they're all alike. If you go in here and you haven't typed in names well you might just boot the wrong server and uh, it doesn't matter in my data center but if this was a production environment it would be really sh irritating to boot the wrong server. So first we get a summary of everything that is going on here. Uh, we have some, it says this server is on. It does not recognize the OS because it's uh, it's booted in VMware and this server is, it does not recognize VMware. The driver, not active, server is operating normally. It, if uh, something is wrong, if there's a fan failure, a hard disk failure, anything, it will say it right down here and there will be some errors right here. Then we get some environments. There are some temperatures. I've never seen these CPUs do any temperatures, which is unfortunate. But it does tell me what the ambient temperature is of, of the server room. So right now it's sucking in 24 degrees hot air. And that's 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it tells me the voltage not gonna bother with that. It tells me the fan speed and it regulates the fan speed on each fan depending on sensors I guess. And further down we have a bit more of information and it tells me oh and it updates. Okay. It updates from time to time and it tells me that the user ID is logged in from this machine. So if more than one user is active on the system you can see who is on the RSA adapter right there. Then we have a system lock. It tells me in here what the system has been up to. I can see that, oh, I have power supply one disconnected at some time. 9th of January seems at five o'clock. Don't know what I've been doing there, but it has a nice big lock 
with a lot of data in it. Yeah. It seems I haven't cleared this since 2014, summer 2014. I cleared it, and I can see I have had some had some heat issues there. Let's see, I had a critical temperature here, 41 degrees. So the server has had probably shut down at that time. And I had one the day after, no, some days after, also a critical temperature. The server will shut down by themselves if the temperature comes over apparently 41 degrees. So I could clear the lock, but it's as long as it's not complaining that the lock is full, it's often very nice to have things like this uh, to look at. So I'm gonna keep it and go further to vital product data. Here I can see the, the server, it's a 7979 and this is a B9G and this is important because I know that the B9G can do the Intel Xeon 5400 series. There's the serial number right there and there's a unique ID code for this server. And there is a lot of other components in this server that is listed down here. Some of them you never need. I have, I don't remember ever needing these. I haven't used that for anything. Then there's the BIOS. It tells me here that uh, the BIOS in here is version 18 and it has a build level and it has a date. I could go and see if there is a newer BIOS. Also, the server has a diagnostics. Um, doing boot of the server, you can press an F key and you can go into a diagnostics mode and the server will do a self-test thingy. And there is different levels of the diagnostics. And this one is from 2009, so it's fairly old. Then there is the ASM. And this is really irritating because that's the old thing. Now it's called RSA, but they haven't changed the name down here. This is actually the firmware for the ASA adapter, but it's called ASM, which is, to say the least, confusing. There is two files that you need to upgrade if you upgrade this. There is the, what is this, main application, and then there's the boot ROM. The other things I've never seen upgraded. Down here it, it tells us something about the version. It's a 1.49. Don't know, can't remember if I've ever used that for anything. I think I might have. Okay, next. On the RSA adapter, you can boot and reboot the server. And it even keeps track on how many boots it has done. The server has booted 69 times. It has been powered on 26,600 hours in a total. Funny round number, we just hit that. We have different options for booting or restarting the, the server itself. Not the RSA adapter here, but the server, the production server underneath. This whole, all this web page that we are on here, that's a web page that the RSA adapter is presenting us and this is ways to control the RSA adapter and the RSA adapter is able to control the server underneath. So here we can we can power the server immediately, we can power the server on a specific time, we can power off the server immediately, we can power off the OS and then power off the server. Now that's a that's a nice one if you want to shut down the server nicely. The RSA adapter will tell the operating system to shut down. Uh, it cannot do that when it does not know the operating system. So for me, it's not really usable right now, but well, it's a nice feature. If, if I was running a Windows version, it would be able to do this. Shut down OS and restart the server. It's the same nice version than this one. If you have an operating system, let's just take the Windows again, and it has crashed, you can try to shut it down and restart the server, and it will do it as nicely as it can. It will ask nicely if you would kindly shut down now, and if it doesn't do that, I'm, I'm not sure if it kicks it down. But it tries nicely first, at least. And then you can restart the, the server immediately, it's like just pushing the button. Then we have some scheduled daily, weekly powers and restart action. 
and these are pretty neat if this is a server in a office environment you might not need the server to be on during the weekend you can actually configure in here that it should shut down during the weekend and power back on monday morning we could we could say friday at when do we want people to be out of here let's just say it's seven o'clock get home to your family and then back on monday morning at zero six then the server would only be on during the weekdays if the server is let's say it's unstable it, there, it has a memory leak or it has something else you can you can actually tell it to reboot every that's Wednesday let's say it, it's doing something weird so we'll just have it reboot Wednesday at 11 o'clock at night and it will be good for Tuesday morning and now it's shutting down Friday evening anyway, so this might be a good option, but there is the option. I don't know if it might be usable for you. I usually turn on and off my servers myself, I must admit that, but the options are here. I'll cancel that, I don't want it to do that. Then we have remote console, and that's the reason why I'm right now on a jump server, because this is kind of buggy. If you have a Windows server running here, you can start remote control using Windows terminal services but you can also just get the screen, the console screen on the server itself. And there is two options for that. There is the, the single user mode and the multi user mode. We're just gonna start the single user mode here. It's only me. This is where it's buggy because it, this is kind of old and it's using Java and Java is, oh, it's a lot of problems. Let's just allow it once and always allow it and then we can go in here again and try it once more and it might pop up yes and it tells us to update that doesn't work either but run this time and do you yes later later and we might get something on the screen now it's actually doing some yeah but it's, it's usually very good and we get a screen and this is a really really neat feature and all and worth all the money this old server has this weird feature where you can we can slide forth and back how much bandwidth it should use for the video graphics i usually just turn it on high otherwise you can select an image on your local pc now that we are on this jump server this one that will it will be the jump server that we can select a file from but um, I've showed this in multiple videos but let's just show it again users Morton downloads and I would probably I would have an ESXi 6.0 here right so I could upgrade this server and just mount that and we have this one and I can mount that drive and the server itself will be able to see that there is a ISO file in the CD-ROM drive. That's really neat. But otherwise I can go in here and configure my server. Um, I, can, I can send some keyboard presses to it. I can do an F2. And I can log in here. And I can use a very nice feature like I can configure the network. If you're sitting far away from the server and playing with the network cards, that's really dangerous. There's all opportunities for losing control over the server. With the RSA adapter, I'm using a different LAN connection, so I can change this number to whatever I want. And even though the server might lose connection, I won't lose connection to the server, so I can still go in and change it back. And that's a really neat feature that, well, you use that from time to time. We can even go in and we can see the network connections in here. I'm only using LAN 0, VM NIC 0. I could go configure LAN 1 here. So you have it's the same thing as if you were standing at the console screen in your data center. Let's go out again and shut down. I think that was about it. Yeah, you can you can also remotely use the A drive and you can put a CD-ROM drive in your CD-ROM drive of this 
now we are on a virtual machine that is controlling that would be a mess the the most usable feature is selecting an iso file here let's just put that one back and see what we get we get image files down here i've only seen it work with iso files i don't know if other file formats are supported i don't think so let's cancel that go back to the screen here the next menu down here is pxe network boot and this feature is used if you should have a pxe server on the standby that you can install this server from or actually just use the server from you have this option i'm not sure why it's an option like this why you don't just press the f8 button or f12 i forget what it is on this server it has a pxe network boot option here firmware upgrade you should be able to do some firmware upgrading in here this is firmware upgrade of the rsa adapter and you go to ibm's homepage and you download the newest firmware we could actually just see that okay i just went into ibm's page here and first down in the bottom here there is support okay and over here is a fix central go in there right there we are and here we can we can search for our server model x3650 and it has it down there the first one and yes that's the one and the operating system is independent so next there we are and there is the rsa2 right there so if we press that we can see that the latest firmware is the 42A. Let's go back and see which one I had on mine here. Rich. That was on the vital data thingy here. I have the 40A. So it would actually be very smart of me to upgrade this. What the hell, let's just do that. So we'll go in here and we will download this one get that and we will put that on the downloads right there save and that was just a megabyte so that should be good and now i of course downloaded it to the wrong machine so i'll just move it over and be right back okay i moved it over now it's right there it is and it's a zip file so we will just unzip that and we need these two pkt files for this procedure so i'll just mark those two and we'll push them out there now they are here and we don't need to see that so minimize that and close that and go back into this firmware upgrade and we will select the first file that's the small one we start with the small one and open and browse and update and it will taste that file and see if, if it likes it. Uh, it's the RSA boot ROM firmware file. Check, continue. And it will upgrade that. It has completed. Um, to do this, you have to restart the RSA adapter. RSM adapter. It has changed the name again. So reset, okay. And we do that down here. So that's fairly easy. We uh, press that, restart, and it won't take that long. But uh, it it wanna it wanna close my tab, so I don't want that because I wanna copy this first. I'll borrow this. Thank you. That one, and then we will close the tab and go on and open it again there we are and it's already booted and that's why this rsa adapter is so cool because it's so much faster than anything else continue so let's see the vital product data we've only upgraded half right now okay it is still thinking about something there we are down here we have the boot rom is now 42 level so let's go upgrade we and we want two years here this firmware is two years newer firmware upgrade we're gonna browse again and we're gonna take the big file this time and open and update this takes a bit longer 
continue. Oh, advanced options. Never seen that one. Mm. Yeah. That didn't really do anything. Continue. And it's gonna be upgrading that for me. That's marvelous. Okay, it's done with that. And it wants to restart the RSA2. So let's reboot the ASM. Restart. Yes, please. And it wanna re it wanna shut down the press. Yes. We will just open it again. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go. Oh. No, it's there. <laughs> And that's how fast these are. This is fantastic. Didn't have to wait long at all. I think this vital product data is a bit slower. Still asking the server, what do you have? What do you have? But now we are up to this firmware on the RSA adapter on both of them, both the main application and the boot ROM. Mm, we could just see if anything has changed. It would be marvelous if you could see the operating system. Uh, it still can't. Too bad. I don't think... I haven't seen any changes really, so that's also why I haven't bothered really updating this. That was the firmware tab, and we even used it for something. Now we have remote control ASM. We can actually remote control more than one ASM adapter. And, well, I haven't used that, but well, I really ought to use that for something someday, just to try it out. But let's move on. Here is the actual control of the ASM adapter. We get some options down here. Here is the server name, for example. That's the server name, and that's the same thing that is being displayed up here. So that's where you change it. You have a ID number. It's I don't think it's important. You have a contact information, so... I could put my name in there. If this server does anything, I would like to know about it. Right, that location, my playhouse. Like that. Host OS, mm, all the Linux. Okay, let's call it Linux. It's a VMware that's based on some Linux. Time server out. Uh, you have some options here for watchdog. What does if the server does something weird, what should it do? And there is there's a nice menu here where you can read about this. If the server doesn't boot the operating system, it can try again and stuff like that, um, which is really neat. And there is different options for that. So you can set if the post does, is not done within four minutes, well, it will try again or shut down or something else. It's a good idea to read what the, the help file says here. It's kind of sophisticated. Have to know about this before you go into it. I'm not gonna go into that today, but down here we have the time and the date. And this is important for some stuff. So let's check that out. Set time and date. And I've actually configured a lot of NTP servers down here, and that's time servers. Different servers that tells me the time. And if you need an, a time server, you just search for it. NTP server. And I'm pretty sure I get the first one here from Denmark. And here is the first Danish one. I'll copy that, go down here and I'll do a ping to it. See if it wanna talk to me. Put that in. And I, it returns an IP number down there. We'll borrow that. Let's mark this. Enter. And we can put that in instead of this one, for example. And press save. And it jumps out. I don't know why it does that, but and synchronized clock. Now it has synchronized the time, and it's the same as this one, so it's probably okay. That's nice. It has this last option, miscellaneous, 
and it's something to do with the disallow command on USB interface and it's a virtual it's a USB interface that the RSA adapter has come in with the with the server and you can disable it you should read this and maybe go Google it I haven't used it for anything but you can give it some commands through through the USB interface apparently um, I'm not gonna be wise guising you on that one next login profiles there is the names that can log into the RSA adapter and on this server I'm only using the standard one the user ID thing I really should make my own one and disable that one that would be best practice but oh, I don't really do that and you can you can apparently have up to 12 users on this one and you can set different things that they can do and there is also the options of communicating with an LDAP server. Users, you can create new users, should we just use make one? I'll just make my own. There is my user and I want to be supervisor, I don't want to bother save that, yes. See, I've made a user for myself. Alerts, yeah, here you have the option of sending alerts for some reason. If the server for some reason has an error, you can enable this and send an email. You can IBM Director over LAN or SMTP over LAN, e email over LAN or, or IBM Director Comprehensive. Um, I'm not sure what that is. But there is different options for it here and you can put different users that should be able to get these alerts and that's all the users you can configure and you can generate a test alert for them if if you have generated some that you can use there is also alert forwarding that's the next area here that you can set up one server to receive the alerts from the other servers and it will push it forward to the next or be the one that is sending out the alerts and then there is and down here there is a lot of settings for all the alerts that you can and it's very very tedious work to make sure that you get the important alerts but not too many because well you can you can set this up wrong and you will just drown in alerts but yeah I'm not gonna go into that serial port well the server has a serial port you can connect and use the serial port to talk to your RSA adapter I think otherwise they probably wouldn't have put this in here and then we have some port assignment and that's different ports that are open on the RSA adapter here and uh, I call it RSA and they call it ASM but well they say it up here RSA adapter and they say it down here in small well we are not we're not eye to eye on that. We have the port 80, which is the port we are actually using right now. There is a secure port also available. We have Tilnet, we have SSH, we have the 2SNMP agent, uh, the traps for the, for the error messages. We have some TCP command mode, remote console. That's probably the port that is being used when we are doing a remote control thing here. And there is the port for the Windows terminal services. We can just try and see a Tilnet how that... Let's see if I have Tilnet on this. Oh, I don't have Tilnet. Okay. Well, for some reason I can't get the Tilnet to work on this one. I have tried reinstalling it. It did not work, but I found that it actually works here. So we can tilt it to the RSA adapter here, and it wants a username. That's user ID. Oh, I could use my own now. Like that. Oh. There we are. We are online, and we can do different stuff. Help. Oh, that's not help. That's help. And there's a bunch of commands that we can throw at the RSA adapter and it will show us different stuff. We can yeah, we can at least see more of them. And well, it's it's more or less just like configuring anything in DOS and you can put in the features in the RSA adapter. 
most of them you can also put in through this way but there should be some more features that you can do here firewall i haven't seen anything called firewall otherwise you have that options too and you can actually make scripts that will put in all the data in the rsa adapter it's a nice way to make the servers alike have a script and you could just put in the data in 10 hosts and all the things would, would be in there and you just have to make sure that they get different names and IP numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, that's an option. Log out again here. That was the ports, the tilnet option and it's probably the same thing with SSH. Network interface, that's where we set the, the IP number that we access the RSA adapter by. There is a lot of good options here. We can enable or disable this interface, choose if it should use the DHCP server or if it should use a static IP number. Uh, I am running all of this on an old 2003 server when I, if I someday get a lot of time, I'll try and upgrade that server and get a better DHCP server and then I probably don't need to use static IP anymore. Right now it's, it's just my laziness. Moving along, network protocols. There's a lot of network stuff here. Most, I've never used this tab for anything, but well, you might use this for something. Might be a lot of good stuff. Yeah, this is also where you tell it where to send the SNMP things that it picks up. Security. Okay, there is a lot of things you can do in here too. Uh, oh, it works very nicely without doing anything. SSH, SSL, web server, enable, disable, save, configuration file. When I've done a server like this, and I think everything is just top notch, I can actually back up my settings do a backup and then on let's say the other 10 servers I can do a restore and I'll get all the settings from one server over to all the other servers might be another way to do the same thing restore default here I can all the settings that I've done on the server I can reset to default we're not gonna do that and then I can restart the ASM which we have already done so that was the big tour I didn't really mean to make this big a tour, I just wanted to do an overview, but that's kind of all the things you can do in this thing. And we can just have a look at the at this one instead. That's the newer model, the IMM. And we can compare. This often takes quite a bit longer to log in. Well, today it was ready for us, apparently. And I have an error here. Some of the monitored parameters are abnormal. So this one actually has an error and it's complaining about the PCI port one on the system is, um, yeah, it doesn't like that. That's the, this is the server where I have cut out a piece of the PCI port to fit in a graphics card and it's, it's complaining about that. We have a lot of the same features. Uh, we have a virtual light path on this one that was not on the other one and here we can just it tells us if everything is okay on the server um, and the failed is on because it was complaining up here but otherwise uh, there isn't really many changes there is some service data download service data here that's uh, something you can send to IBM support if the server is doing something stupid, that's where you can, it, it can drag out a report of how everything is, but otherwise it's more or less, it looks very similar. And this is, it's really a good thing because there's nothing as irritating as getting a new server from the same company that you always buy your servers from and they have changed everything you have to learn how to shit in a new way that's really tedious yeah that was a far longer overview of the RSA adapter and the management port of the IBM server than I had intended and also all the stuff that you get in the data center usually it has a management port the uh, 
HP down here. Mm, that's out of view. HP server here. They had their ILO adapter that they're on generation, I think it's generation 4 right now. IBM of course has the IMM adapters as they call right now and the Dell servers they have their is it called DAC adapters? DAC? DAC adapters? Centralized that I have on the shelf they have another option but every server brand they have their own management adapter and it's a really cool thing and if you're looking for a server and it has a management adapter well you should get it uh, not just get the server because of it but it's a good feature to have it's a plus for the server if it has that adapter it's a good thing thank you for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye